Thank you very much for your company with me as usual on the marketplace. Welcome back. The Ghana Revenue Authority, GRA, in Cape Coast has embarked on another distress action. This time, it has closed down the Manor Heights Hotel at Mankesim. The Manor Heights Hotel, according to the GRA, owes the state over 300,000 Ghana cities and has failed to settle their indebtedness despite persistent reminders by the GRA. Richard Kojunyako joined the task force and has filed this report. So the Ghana Revenue Authority has been very busy today. They've embarked on a distress action. There's a taxpayer, Beatrice Amwa, who has been indebted to the state since 2012 after an audit was conducted at her premises. According to the GRA, this woman has been playing hide and seek with them. According to the Ghana Revenue Authority, in 2014, Beatrice Amwa, the owner of the shops, wrote for cessation of business when she had not settled the audit liability. The cessation deregistration audit was conducted subsequently as required. According to the GRE, effort and arrangement for her to settle her tax liability of 205,992 Ghana cities fell on deaf ears. It came to light that she had gone to register new businesses by name Peak Commodities, operated by her two sons, Anamis Enterprise, managed by her daughter, Benibuam, managed by another daughter, and Mestor, operated by herself. Head of Compliance, Enforcement, and Debt Management at the Cape Coast Medium Tax Office. William Ampoma read a charge, made them sign the letter and subsequently closed down the shop and the warehouse. Act 915, do hereby authorize me to collect and recover the sum of 250,992 Ghana cities due and owing for taxes and interest and penalties from you, Beatrice Amwa, a tax debtor of the Cape Coast Medium Tax Office, and for the recovery of the sum I authorized, I was authorized with the, with the necessary assistance for the police to levy this sum forthwith to distress action together with expenses, costs and charges and of incidental to the execution of this warrant. And Where we are is a warehouse here situated at Peidu within the Cape Coast metropolis and the action has been extended to this place. The place has been closed down and behind me are GRA officials. Commission is thus advising all the 14 taxpayers to go to their offices to make the necessary arrangement to settle their tax liabilities in order to avoid similar actions. Richard Kwejonya Akon for Joy Business. Now, Chairman of the Parliamentary Select Committee on Trade and Industries, Nana Mafu Ameniampong, has urged members of the Ghana Union of Traders Association, Guta, to desist from closing shops belonging to foreigners who operate in the local retail market. This, he noted, could lead to retaliatory attacks on Ghanaian traders in other foreign countries. The MP says countries must depend on each other in international trade, and therefore no need for Guta to close down shops of foreigners. Nana Ameniampong was commenting on the back of recent threats by Guta executives to flush out foreigners occupying the local retail market if government fails to do so within a week. He spoke with Joy Business in an interview. This Guta thing, I mean, deep within, I'm telling you, even those, it is out of frustration that, I mean, these Guta members are doing that. When Nigeria also began to flex their muscles, you also started hearing that they've closed their borders and this. If we think that we will not, because we've made a law that this should be ceded to Ghanaians alone, so we don't want to see foreigners here. They can also say that, fine, we don't need Ghanaians to come and also send anything to our country uh, and also take anything from our country. At the end of the day, you see that, I mean, both countries will suffer in a way. When I came to parliament, this law, this Act 856, has already been in existence for almost 15 years. And somebody was saying that, the church chairman was saying that, uh, I'm saying that that law is a bad law and we have to change it. Fine. As at that time, if they, they have that uh, benefit of the future, probably that law might have not been put into it. Because let me tell you, 
whether we like it or not. Sometimes we can behave like ostriches, bury our head in the sun and behave like nothing is happening. Only for uh, some car to come and knock you off. We need Nigeria, Nigeria needs us. Because no particular country can be self-sufficient. If America of all places, China of all places think that they need Ghana, then it tells you that everybody needs everybody. The Ministry of Energy has directed the Petroleum Commission to evaluate the opportunities and risks the implementation of the Continental Free Trade Agreement could present to the upstream petroleum sector. The Free Trade Agreement is expected to come into force by the middle of next year, and Ghana is hosting the Secretariat. Addressing the sixth local content conference in the exhibition in Takradi, Deputy Energy Minister Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam said enforcing local content requirements within a free trade area should be a matter of concern. Various players uh, within the upstream petroleum sector have gathered here in Takradi for the sixth local content conference and exhibition, which is scrutinizing the progress made so far with the implementation of local content policies. Now, it has become especially important because next year we'll see the implementation of the Continental Free Trade Agreement, and that could also pose some challenges. Well, addressing the opening of the conference, um, the Deputy Minister of Energy, uh, Mohamed Amin Adam, called for an assessment of the opportunities and the risks presented by the implementation of the Continental Free Trade Agreement. Countries with local content initiatives aimed at accelerating the capacity of their people and businesses have greater opportunity to access the bigger regional continental market. On this note, let me take the opportunity to direct the Petroleum Commission to begin to evaluate the opportunities and threats the Africa Continental Free Trade Area presents to Ghana's local content implementation. Meanwhile, the Petroleum Commission has announced tough sanctions for indigenous firms found fronting for foreigners. Acting CEO Egbert Fable made the announcement today. The era of fronting is about to end. Beginning next year, the Commission, working with other state actors, including the Registrar General's Department and the Ghana Revenue Authority, will begin the enforcement of the relevant laws, including tax assessments on the basis of one's equity participation and hence profit sharing, revocation of operating permits and non-issuance of permits to indigenous Ghanaian companies and their partners who are proven after thorough investigations to have engaged in fronting. Let me therefore use this opportunity to advise all those engaged in fronting to put a stop to it immediately. About 60 companies are participating in this year's local content conference and exhibition, and the conference is hosting uh, participants from countries like Brazil, Mozambique, Nigeria, and Trinidad and Tobago. Daryl Kwao, Joy Business, Takrade. Meanwhile, CEO of the Petroleum Commission, Egbert Fevel Jr., has noted that an increase in petroleum exploration activities this year has created competition for space among various marine stakeholders. Speaking at the 2019 annual engagement with chiefs in the Western Region, House of Chiefs in Takradi, he reminded fishermen about the exclusion zones earmarked to protect fishing activities around offshore installations. The engagement was to provide an opportunity for the Petroleum Commission to give updates on the upstream petroleum sector relating to completed projects, ongoing projects, activities and the way forward. CEO of the Petroleum Commission, Egbert Fiebel Jr. stated that the Petroleum Commission and its role as the upstream regulator will carry out its mandate in ensuring that oil production in Ghana contributes directly towards improving standards of living of the people and accelerating socio-economic development in Ghana as a whole. The Commission's overarching goal of our social performance effort is to ensure sustainable and social development in the oil and gas catchment areas. Besides the mandated mitigation of assessed socioeconomic impacts of upstream activities on the host communities, the industry is also very keen on investing in the communities through their respective corporate social investment initiatives for shared benefits. The Petroleum Commission understands that it is the chiefs and traditional rulers who are best placed to understand 
understand the needs and aspirations of the people, the challenges of the local environment, and the dynamics of the different groups living in the local environment. The engagement was also to create a platform for international oil companies to share with the chiefs their corporate social responsibility projects and initiatives in the region and receive feedbacks and provide the opportunity to listen to the concerns of the chiefs and their community members with regards to the oil and gas activities among others. Oil can one day go off, get finished. And as a result, we have to you know, do the maximum we can during the period. A lot of expectations came into, into being when the oil, oil fine was made. People thought that it was going to change their lives overnight. Unfortunately, that has not been the situation. And if you look at what the people of Western Region is saying, that if you look at the Vienna Hospital, which was built in the colonial days for those expatriates and uh, their workers who came to work at the front, it is outmoded. A lot of the facilities there are not functioning. Oil companies should always collaborate with us. Let us know their problems, their challenges, then we can also have discussions with their people, our people to understand. One issue that's cropped out today, all along when they talk about security, we thought that they were referring to fishermen disturbing them. But there's a bigger threat, and that's the center threat, because they, we realize there are trawlers, there are smaller boats, which go to anchor close to their PSO for days, and all these things should be monitored. For dry business in Athalia, Kwanza, Western Region, Let's talk aviation matters now. The ranking member of the Rules and Transport Committee of Parliament, Kwame Agoja, says Ghanaians must treat publication by Boeing, indicating government's intention to acquire three airplanes to revive his home-based carrier with contempt. Kwame Agoja debunks the claim, stating that there is no document to that effect. Ghana plans to acquire airplanes for a home-based carrier. He spoke to Joy Business at the back of the aviation minister's uh, interview in Dubai, uh, in the air show in Dubai, after signing an MOU with aircraft maker Boeing. The Member of Parliament says there is no such agreement nor plans anywhere before Parliament to purchase aircrafts. Ghana was looking into a possibility of having an agreement with Ethiopian Airlines so that we can work with them because they, they are the biggest uh, home carrier on the continent. But the Ghanaians are attending an air show in uh, uh, Dubai currently. I saw a picture of uh, the, the director general of a uh, Ghana airport company and some people holding an aircraft which is not even uh, uh, Boeing, a 7, uh, 787 uh, Dreamliner. And we are told by the newswire that they have signed an agreement, uh, an MOU for a possible purchase. In fact, in that write-up, it said three. So I don't know where you got six from. If you check the, the, the off-the-shelf price of a Boeing 787 Dreamliner, it's about $250 million uh, each. If you're going to buy it on high purchase, that could be anything above $300 million. I doubt if Ghana government has the ability to buy one, two, three, four, five, six aircraft of that nature for this project. Nobody is against us having a national career, but I can tell you that I am not aware that any government official said that they are buying six uh, 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 aircraft. It never, it's never in anywhere. I think Boeing is just trying to up their game. You know Boeing is under pressure now because of the failed uh, the, the Max that uh, got crashed. They are having a, a difficulty. So they are trying to undo Airbus uh, in terms of uh, getting people to sign up to buy their aircraft. So I can tell you for a fact, there's no agreement anywhere. There's no paper anywhere that shows. There's nothing in the budget that shows that we are going to buy even a small helicopter for Ghana Airways, let alone buy an aircraft that is off the shelf, $250 million. If you're buying high purchase, maybe $300 million. Six of them, forget it. That is not happening. Interesting comments there by the ranking member of parliament. Now, some entrepreneurs within Ghana's digital uh, eco space say some government policies and business regulations do not synchronize with their day to day demands to expand and remain globally competitive. The recently held Africa Business Heroes Show by the Jack Ma Foundation ended with no Ghanaian entrepreneur making it to the final 10, with finalists from Nigeria, Kenya, and Egypt winning the $1 million prize put up by the Jack Ma Foundation. Joy Business's Charles Aitig 
explores what techpreneurs in Ghana could be doing wrong. With consumer preference widening and market shares expanding, many African economies, including Ghana, are leapfrogging to a new age of digitization. With just a click of a button, business deals are made and new markets forged. One group of like minds venturing deep into this digital space are techpreneurs. Here at the Code Lab, an e-commerce avenue for techpreneurs, I've come to meet Henry Intiako Ayukombla, founder of Ahenepa, an e-commerce platform for garment producers to sell domestically and internationally. Much of the people might tell you that um, issues are with regards to funding, but I think that it goes way beyond funding um, because funding basically comes in to just give you money to do just certain things, but the basic things is ideas. Here to get in touch with one such techpreneur from Kenya who is doing really great is in a person of Teddy Warrior. He's going to be helping me understand the secrets, that Kenyan secrets to the entire development. Hello, Teddy. I hope you're doing fine. The first thing, uh, Kenya is actually a very enterprising.